Hey Alex, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Going good, Alex. How are you? How was your day so far? I'm doing very well. My day's going pretty all right. So, Can't complain. That's good, Alex. <laughs> how about you? Oh, it's almost going to end for me today. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. What time is it over there for you? Oh, it's uh, 10 30 in the night. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking the time oh, to do this. It's my pleasure, Alex. So, Alex, your third full length album, Color the Soul, is to be out on May 20th. So, can you tell me a bit about this songwriting and the production behind this new album? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, we actually wrote the album in 2018 when uh, I was living in England at the time studying music production. And so, like uh, the rest of our band is all in Canada. So we did a lot of like file sharing back and forth, which we hadn't really done that before. We've been a band since about 2013 and we've always just kind of written a lot more traditionally together. So it was pretty different in that regard of just not physically being in the same place for a while. But once we had about nine songs put together, uh, Yoan, our singer and Steve, our guitarist came over to visit me and we were able to kind of put the album all together together so yeah it was a different writing process than anyone we've ever had before just because it was um yeah a lot of file sharing and stuff like that but we, we made it work yeah sounds amazing and was there any obstacle when you are doing things like that that you've never done before and during this process i'd say the biggest obstacle is just not having an immediate response to an idea you have like if you came up with like a great riff and you want to show it to someone right away yeah. there could be like a 12 hour delay before that person gets that uh, riff or whatever and and is able to react to it and then you're probably in a completely different state by that time so I th i'd say that's the uh the biggest obstacle is just not having some sort of immediate input that's yeah true. and what was the concept that was put behind this album uh, the concept is sort of based on uh, what uh, Carl Jung, the philosopher, would have called, um, or sorry, uh, I guess psychotherapist. I'm not sure what his specific title would have been. But um, he had like what he called the map of the soul and kind of had 10 different points of it as to where different things would line up, different parts of the human soul and our sort of our, our ambitions or desires or maybe more negative aspects of ourselves are highlighted in these parts of things. So each song kind of lines up yeah. with a part of the soul. So that kind of uh, is, is why it's called Color of the Soul, really. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I believe the cover art has something connected with this. Yeah, you can but see in uh, the, our kind of main guy, there, we've had the same dude on all of our album covers yeah. and so we always kind of put him through a different sort of scenario but this kind of this time he's sort of just ambiguously in space and holding the color the map of the soul like in between his hands there yeah amazing and uh, <laughs> talking about this album 10 great songs put together crafted really well okay got it there you go hey how's it going going good young how are you how was your day so good far? how are you yeah um, good <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the sorry for the broken up start there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was just updating my Zoom. Uh, was asking for an update, so it took a bit. Oh, longer. okay, yeah. So it's all good. So we were you know, we were having a couple of questions earlier, so I will come up with the next question. So we'll just start with start that again here. So uh, talking about this new album, the ten powerful, amazing Black Death fusion melodic kind of metal absolutely that brought together great work from yeah you so oh, thank, thank you, you very much, much. <laughs> yeah i appreciate yeah. it i like your shirt too that's okay. great <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> so as a fan how do you feel about the outcome of this new album yeah i, th I think it's fantastic uh it's been so long um in the making that we were actually able to take as much time as we possibly could to make it as perfect as possible. And it actually got to the point where we were second guessing that we were kind of overdoing it to the, at this yeah. point compared to the last album. Um, whereas it was kind of more of a, a steady flow. This was very much so pieces of our life uh, melding together. So when we listen to it now, we actually uh, really enjoy listening to different aspects of the past like three years or so. 
So it's been very winter son of us, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. And do you guys have any plans on the day of the release on May 20th? Uh, we don't have anything booked for that day, uh, but we're going to be starting a little tour at the start of July. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing some Canadian dates there to start promoting the release. So I suppose the sort of CD release show will be on July 1st, actually. But the album comes out everywhere on May 20th, and we'll be um, pushing it on the internet for the time being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, social life-wise, I'm sure a bunch of our friends will have us drinking in the woods and celebrating. But <laughs> until then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll still celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Nothing out of the usual. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And in March, you put up your first video from this album hero looks so can you tell me a bit about the making of this amazing video and song yeah so there's actually a, a fantastic uh local music video maker uh from around the area that we live in and for a lot of the metal bands in the local scene he's done some fantastic work with them he's even done one video i think alex was in it in like a blacksmith shop and that was really cool oh, yeah yeah that was awesome but, that was the video for the band called raider um yeah. Yeah, this guy, Michael Krusty, he makes incredible uh, music videos around here. And he was nice enough to do our video for Hero Lux. And we shot it all in one day in a in an empty venue in Kitchener because this venue, uh, it was during the COVID like pandemic and everything. They couldn't have shows there anymore. So the venue was trying to make money. Uh, so they rented it out for whatever you wanted to do. So we just had this massive room to film everything we, we needed to do in there. And it turned out really good. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yeah. And on April 19th, the second single from the album was released. Uh, great song again from again. I need to be honest with you. This entire album was totally amazing that you guys have put up. So I enjoyed it. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you have also plans to make more videos before the release of the album? Yeah, yeah there so will we be. Have a few. Yeah. yeah, a few different playthroughs going on. So, each of the band members has their own playthrough for a different song. Um, we're talking about lyric videos, maybe also another music video, perhaps down the line. Um, but, yeah. uh, for now we're still a, a small financed business, so <laughs> we <laughs> still need to keep it tight knit, see how many shirts we sell, how many CDs perhaps. And yeah. Yeah. Or, or me and Alex will just go away to Hawaii or something. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take all the money from this album. We're going to go yeah. to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and how is the touring plans looks like for you this year uh, it looks like july is going to be pretty busy so we'll have a busy summer uh and then hopefully just into next year we're, we'll keep booking shows um i would like to get to america for the first time because we've only played in canada so far yeah and we live rather close to the border so it would be cool if we could finally get across there and play some shows in new york or something like that yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Just to, mm -hmm. to travel anywhere outside of Canada would be awesome because um, as lovely as Canada is and it's a great metal scene, it's uh, very much so super spread out. So, yeah, like I'm, I'm from England originally. So whenever I think about going on tour, it's still in my head. I think like, OK, so like the next town should be like half an hour away, but it's usually about two hours to get to the next like great place sort of thing. Everything's so far apart. Right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. A Canadian tour is very, very long and not many people are there. So it's uh, mm -hmm. it's a, yeah. quite a financial thing to take on as a young band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less it, festivals too, it seems like. Yeah. At least for our genres, uh, our type of music. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> grew up, uh, all of the local venues we used to play with was a lot of um, like metalcore stuff, which we don't mind listening to, but it's, it's really funny when like, we got known around the area as the band that kind of wore all the blood and like had like a keyboard player. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, very Keeping different. The, uh, the more traditional yeah. heavy metal things rather than the hardcore things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. amazing, amazing. And almost 11 years since the formation of the band. So how has the road been for you guys so far? Uh, it's been quite a journey, honestly. Uh, we started the band when Yohan and I were just in high school. Uh, it was kind of like a folk metal studio project when we first did it, and we sang about 
like Welsh mythology uh, for the first little while, or at least uh, that was a big part of the impetus of it. And yeah, it's really, it's taken many different forms in our lives ever since and different people have come in and out of it, but it's, it's just always been such a, a positive goal for us and something to keep us on a path in life. So I, it's, I don't know, it's been a, a very enlightening and, uh, just joyous aspect of our lives, I think. Mm-hmm. Very much so like the, uh, the, the anchor or like the, the base level line of like how I like to conduct my life and to know where my trajectory is, is, uh, okay. Is this helping the band? Is this helping what I would like to do for a living, which is make money off of music. So everything I do kind of sources back into it. And so as, again, that kind of fits into the whole, um, uh, thesis of this new album is like uh, all of the runic soul lore stuff it's all like a big web and it all leads back to the original sort of uh, concept and that's kind of how we try and do things and so when people ask if uh, we think the music's vastly different and like if that's on purpose it's absolutely on purpose because uh, how many humans do you know that were the same person they are 10 years before you know and so as long as that core of that human remains, most people are okay with the change. It's only when you kind of compromise your inner self that people start to think, oh, he's different, you know? And so (laughs) if you listen to this album, it should sound different, but um, spiritually it should be the same as the original one. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And being (laughs) a band from two different places, England and Canada, so how has the support been for you guys on both the countries? Oh, yeah. So I've actually lived in Canada since I was about seven, but I go back and forth all the time. And uh, I think that's actually made Alex quite a lot more British in in tow as well, because we moved back to England. We go see my family every once in a while. Uh, We're we're a bit Finnish, too, because we go we have a band in Finland. So we'll go up there, too. We just like to travel, you know, experience the world. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, we're we're lucky to have kind of friends all over in the metal scene. And it's uh it's benefited our, our music and just our personal relationships and everything. So it's, um, Absolutely. it's great. We, we really want to get over there to play some shows, obviously. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And would you like to share some of the big moments that you had over the years? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've definitely opened for some cool bands when we mm-hmm. were, uh, you know, and what, what year was it when we opened for Ein Harrier, like the Norwegian um, band? 2014 i think or 2013 okay. 14 or 14 or 15, 14 around, or 15 yeah. I'd yeah. Say. yeah yeah pretty close to not long after we'd released our very first ep we got to go play with uh the band ein Herrier, who are like a, a norwegian one of the seminal folk metal kind of beginnings of that sort of genre yeah and like we got to go black metal kind of thing like what we yeah. were at that time too yeah we got to go play with them pretty early on and that that was amazing mm-hmm. obviously um and yeah, probably our first tour, like when we went out to Quebec City and back, like that was some of the most fun we ever had uh, yeah. as a band for sure. Um, but overall, like the main thing that makes me so happy about Unbowed is it's like, it's kind of uh, the way I've met the majority of my friends and the people in my life right now is through this band and through music. So it's, that's kind Definitely. of the biggest accomplishment for me is just, it's uh, been kind of the heart of my life in a lot of ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like we, we used to uh, skip high school classes and we'd go have a fire in the woods and then more and more people ca- kept coming to fires in the woods. And now that's just a staple where we all hang out sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the amount of people we've known in the band or out now, um, we stay friends with them because again, it shouldn't compromise who we are as people uh, just because we're going on different paths sort of thing. Um I think that one of the biggest highlights for me is having um, so many great artists feature on this new album because those are all people that we used to listen to in those sort of uh you know primal days where we were <laughs> trying to figure out what we wanted to sound like and so having uh Vreth from Fintral on it or Joel from Thross and Blatt and Woods of Ypres those are like uh fantastic people to have on this album because they uh spiritually just mean so much to the whole genus of the album in itself so that's yeah having fantastic. them involved almost like legitimizes our entire uh trajectory as a band because we were so influenced by those people when we started and now they're literally on our album with us so yeah. it's uh a very cool feeling mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Sounds good. And uh, talking about the songwriting process, so do you guys always follow a certain theme or a concept, or is it going to be diverse anytime in the future? I'd say it's uh, it kind of evolves. It depends on the song. It's mm -hmm. usually like someone will have an idea. It's sort of a rough layout, and then it kind of gets pitched back and forth to the other people, and everyone kind of adds their layer. I suppose yeah. um, typically I they will either Alex or Alex and one of the other band members will make a song uh, they usually name it something silly and <laughs> send yeah, it yeah. to me, and yeah. then I'll listen to it and even though this song's called like I want a Big Mac it's uh, <laughs> it'll be like it'll be like some sort of uh, ethereal sounding bombastic thing that will put visions in my head and like so I think that's where being a fan first has really helped uh, make me a better musician. Because uh, when I was in like, you know, the earlier days of high school, listening to certain music types would uh, help me get away from the the boringness of you know your, your surroundings, right? And so as a kid, you want to see other things, and so my imagination would always run rampant. So I try and tap into that whenever I hear some of these demos and then I'll be like, oh, that's what this sounds like. And then I'll be able to write uh, the, my lyrics to that sort of thing. And I'll be humming before I even know the lyrics most of the time as well. Hmm. So there's a band called The Ocean. I don't know if you've heard of them from Germany. Yeah. yeah so the way that the vocalist of The Ocean does it is uh, he goes into the vocal booth and kind of just sat, like sounds noises and yeah. he doesn't have lyrics yet, but he blocks it like that. Sometimes I'll do that sort of thing as well. But uh, I think, it, yeah, it really depends on the song. Sometimes they come easier than others. Some songs are like, you know, pulling teeth, trying to figure out what I want it to sound like. But like, that's only because it's uh, like, I've made such an important vision. So I'm like, oh, no, that's not it. That's not what I need to say. You know, when it, it's uh, perfect, right? So, <laughs> yeah. And any big dreams for the band? Uh, yeah, uh, I'd love to have... Um, I'd, I'd love to open for Mariah Carey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but like, you know, um, we always try and say like best band in the world. So like, keep it, you know, sky's the limit. That's kind of what yeah. we like to try and go for. Yeah. 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 Maybe we Beyonce. Are, uh, on yeah, exactly. We are playing, <laughs> yeah. we are playing a show in Quebec this, uh, this summer and the promoter, messaged me and was like, oh, there's going to be a big festival going on on that day. And I looked in the headliner of the festival is Maroon 5. <laughs> and and I, yeah. I was like, oh, um, maybe we could just hop on that gig or. Yeah. Yeah. We're, mm -hmm. we're just aiming for the top. <laughs> yeah. Just as far as we can go, basically, until yeah. one of us kicks the bucket and then, you know, probably keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And what would be some of the upcoming plans post release of the album? Uh, well, we've got a couple more playthrough videos coming out. Uh, Heavily they promoting were... it. Yeah. Yeah. Really trying to get the promotion angle. There's going to be a lot of album reviews and all that kind of stuff that will be just constantly pushing out there. And um, yeah, just trying to get it in as many years as possible. And then. Come the summer, we'll be uh, we'll be playing live as often as possible. Mm -hmm. Sounds great, sounds great. And uh, finally, what would be the message that you want you to the fans around the world? Hmm. Never give up on your dreams. As cheesy as it sounds, um, always stick to that main thing that made you uh, think. You know what? There is way more to life than whatever I've been told there is as a child you know and keep that alive let it morph how it wants but you know let it just go you'll, you'll figure it out if you keep true to that amazing yeah exactly <laughs> sounds great <laughs> sounds good and alex and your one thank you so much for giving me today you me today this opportunity to have this wonderful interview with you and thanks for the amazing album that you're putting up on april 20th a great album once again to say to talk about it Amazing one, great work from you guys, from you guys again. A pleasure to listen Thank to the album now. And thanks again for the music. And I wish you guys all the best in the coming days. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ben. You. Do you yeah. mind if I just take a quick like selfie like this just yeah. to put on our Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's do it. <laughs> uh,
Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, nice yeah. to meet you. Thanks, yeah, thanks so much, man. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.